Maintaining professional ethics and thinking critically about ethical issues is one of the most important things you can do as a scholar. While there are many ethical conundrums you may encounter throughout your career, with regards to the use of human subjects, there are generally considered to be four critical areas worthy of discussion. Harm, informed consent, privacy invasion, and deception. Participants must be protected from all reasonable risks of harm. What we mean by reasonable is things that are foreseeable or outside of the range of the normal risk one encounters in daily life. For example, if a, par if a, a participant is in a car accident on the way to your experiment or your survey, that's not something that you should or could have prevented. <clears throat> Harm may be physical, psychological, or social, and all forms of harm must be considered. In most social science studies, physical harm is actually not the primary form of harm likely to occur. Psychological or social harm are more likely in social science studies. Psychological harm would be anything that would damage the psyche of the participant. In many cases, even talking about some issues may bring up past issues that are difficult for subjects. For example, when interviewing women about how they got involved in male-dominated sports or sports that are defined as male-dominated, <clears throat> I was immediately confronted with a woman whose response was that it was after a sexual assault. Her way of finding power again was by playing these sports. And I had to think, like, had I created some kind of psychological harm in bringing up a very painful experience for her? Um, social harm would be the person's social standing. Often, respondents may tell you things that could damage their standing were others to know of these things. That's why anonymity and confidentiality are critical. But in addition, you have to sometimes go above and beyond what you might normally consider. For example, Dr. DeYoung, Dr. Fuqua, and myself did a study recently, and in this study we found that while we wanted to publish results, it would have been very difficult to truly protect the anonymity of our participants, and we felt that it was crucial to do so and have had to make the choice not to publish our results. Participants in research must give what is called informed consent. Informed consent means that the person understands any reasonable risks associated with participation and in addition to understanding those risks then gives their consent to freely participate in the study. In addition, if you're providing any benefits for participants in the study, you cannot coerce people to participate by withholding those benefits from others. For example, if um, I knew a researcher who was interested in studying homeless people. This researcher was offering a meal as compensation. Whether or not the person agreed to participate, she provided the meal. For a homeless person, a meal could be coercion. Hence, she bought them the meal whether or not they participated. In fact, she told me that several people told her no, and when she bought them the meal anyway, they then said, well, actually, I would like to participate. I, I didn't think you were telling me the truth. Um, in addition, I like to point out that this is why I offer multiple forms of extra credit. Were I to only offer you extra credit through participation in the SONA website or through, um, other, through research opportunities, you would then be coerced to participate in research assignments. This is one of the reasons that I offer you other ways to earn that research credit. Participants in research should not be significantly deceived during the course of a study. It's impossible to give informed consent if you're being deceived. While some researchers feel that no deception is acceptable, others believe that low-level deception is fine. For example, Dr. Kassad, a former faculty member here, and I worked, did some work with local middle schools to look at how stereotype threat or being told that a particular group of people isn't good at math then affects math performance. Obviously, we had to have a little bit of deception in order to test this case. We did a significant amount of debriefing and had activities afterwards to attempt to mitigate any, any problems caused by the deception we used. In our case, what we did is we told students in the experimental group that girls weren't as good at a particular math test. In the control group, students were told that boys and girls did equally well. Following the study, 
what we did to mitigate this is we told students that they had been tricked, that boys and girls did equally well on this test. To bring home the point that women are very success, can be just as successful as men in mathematics, we brought a female math professor and several graduate students in mathematics from Cal Poly Pomona to run an activity with the class. Of course, the control group also got the activity as a reward, too. The invasion of the privacy of individuals should be minimized. Research participants should not be asked for information that is unnecessary for the project. In addition, confidentiality and anonymity should be used to mitigate the potential harm caused by privacy invasion. Participants in research should be promised confidentiality and or anonymity. Whatever needs to be done to ensure this is what you need to do. For, there are several things you can do in a study in which people might be identifiable because of unique characteristics or a small sample size. One thing you can do is when you report your results, always aggregate the data. Talk about the people in very general groups to ensure that someone doesn't stand out. Remove identifying features such as race or gender or rank or anything that might give away of who a particular individual is in a small sample study. And lastly, security codes are often used to, in you're doing something like a pre and post test and you need to match up items. Once those items are matched up, the original names, the original list should be destroyed so that you only have the match paired exams, but you don't know to whom each exam or each study applies. This is very important. For example, I did a study here at Cal Poly Pomona with Dr. Namiro in which we interviewed women in science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines. Many of these people reported incidents of gender or racial discrimination. Were we to, I, to describe someone in detail, in many cases they would have been made identifiable. In fact, just giving gender, race, and rank in many cases would have made someone identifiable. So we had to speak about people in very general terms so that you couldn't tell to whom we were referring. During the Nuremberg trials, it came out that the Nazis had conducted research on unwilling subjects. Much of this research was horrific, to say the least. As a result, here in the United States, we've taken a closer look at the way research is conducted. All accredited universities have an institutional research board, a group of faculty and staff that oversee research that takes place on campus. In order to conduct research involving human or animal subjects, mem members of our campus community have to get IRB approval. This involves passing a city training, a CITI, and um, there are other similar courses available at other universities. And filling out a form that asks for a series of in pieces of information about the research you are conducting and what will be done to the participants in your research. This is then sent around to an impartial body that takes a look at what you're planning to do and comments on it. You also submit the form with which you obtain informed consent from your participants. This is viewed and, and it carefully evaluated to ensure that all federal guidelines are met. Obviously, research that does not involve human or other living subjects is exempt. So I do a lot of research on the mass media. One of the great things about this research is you don't need to get IRB approval to study, well, television or print media. Anonymous surveys, fortunately, also often get fast-tracked. The IRB is a very important institution because in addition to protecting human subjects, it also protects the university from impending lawsuits. By meeting all federal guidelines, we're protected. It also protects us, the faculty, and you, the students. If you conduct research and you meet the IRB guidelines and someone becomes unhappy and a lawsuit is filed, the university be, would be required to protect you or me in a similar circumstance. On the other hand, certain types of research are incredibly difficult to get through human subjects for you, and this may stymie some forms of legitimate research that isn't of harm to human subjects. For example, there's some people who can't give consent. Now, if that group of people is a group that's being abused and you need to get consent from their prospective abusers, that would be a very difficult thing to do. I've also included here the 
um, address of our IRB here on campus. If you'd like to go to their website and find out more about obtaining approval for a project that you're considering. Ethics can be difficult. Sometimes it isn't clear what the appropriate thing to do. It's by looking at the ethical conundrums that have plagued our disciplines that we can get a better sense of some of the problems that you might encounter. Zimbardo's prison experiments, Stanley Milgram's obedience to authority, and Laud Humphrey's tea room trade all pose examples of cases in which there are some questionable ethics. At the same time, the research that resulted was incredibly important. Some of you may already be familiar with Zimbardo's prison experiment. Some of you may even have met Zimbardo at conferences. Here is a link to a video on the Zimbardo prison experiment. I have included it in the course documents. I, would I strongly suggest you watch this video. Then give a, think about, take a moment to stop and think about it and exactly what both the video t teaches us, but also the danger that it posed to students, students pretty much just like yourself. Having now watched the video about the Stanford prison experiments, ask yourself, what did Zimbardo add to the body of research on prisons and other total institutions? But then take a moment to think, what ethical principles was he violating? Why do we talk about this experiment as an ethical conundrum? What are you th your thoughts on what he found and what he did? In the wake of the Nuremberg trials of the Nazis, many Americans were shocked at the answers that they gave. Most of them simply said they were just following orders. Stanley Milgram, a social psychologist, was interested in actually taking a closer look at people's willingness or unwillingness to simply follow orders. Milgram designed an experiment in order to test people's willingness to follow orders, even in a situation in which the stakes were relatively low. Please take the time to watch the video segment on Milgram's experiment. The link is here and also on the course webpage. Milgram had the intention of demonstrating a key feature of human psychology that had facilitated the rise of fascism in Europe, and specifically Nazi Germany. His results are quite astounding. On the other hand, were his methods ethically problematic? What do you think? I had difficulty finding a video I thought was appropriate to show for a class on Laud Humphrey's The Tea Room Trade. A tea room is a place where generally men meet for anonymous sexual encounters. Within a tea room, one could occupy one of three roles. The uh, the top, the bottom, or what's called the watch queen. Humphreys learned of this phenomenon, and he was also working for the Board of Health in a small Midwestern city, or a mid-sized Midwestern city, I should say, at that time. Humphreys visited several team rooms, took on the role of watch queen, observed men engaged in anonymous sex, followed them to their cars, and took down their license plate numbers. He then, through the help of a friend who worked for the DMV, obtained their home addresses and, after changing his appearance and waiting a short period of time, arrived at their home with a public health survey that was currently being carried out. What he found was a real disconnect between what, the, what he saw the individuals doing and what they said on the public survey. What he found was a large number of men who self-identified as heterosexual, were married and had children, but also stopped at tea rooms for anonymous sex with other men. Humphreys is critiqued for a number of reasons. First, he obtained their license plate numbers through ethically questionable means. Second, most of the people couldn't really give true informed consent. They didn't know that he had watched them in the bathroom when they agreed to fill out the survey. Though some people would comment that they also didn't agree to be part of a study in the bathroom, others argue that anything you do in a public place, you have to be aware that you could be observed. Finally, as one of my students pointed out, he was studying a public health dilemma during the early parts of the AIDS epidemic. He knew that these men were having unprotected sex and that they were putting their wives at risk and failed to report them. 
Many people also point out that there is an extreme risk of social harm here. For a heterosexually identified man during a time period in which one could be fired for engaging in homosexual behavior, as you still can be in many states, um, should these men have been outed against their will, they could have lost their standing in the community as well as their marriages. Many, most people argue that this creates a very serious ethical dilemma. I want to close by stressing that today, what we generally believe is that the most important thing is to protect your participants. Ethics cannot merely be about weighing the importance of the research against the violation. It has to be solely about the participants in your study. You owe it to them to provide them full protection, even if this compromises your research agenda.